<laughs> hey everyone, it's Thought Monkey here. Today I'm going to be talking about the Persian Wars. Persia was really the world's first big empire, and in around 500 BCE, it ran most of the known world, from Egypt all the way to the western banks of India. The Greeks at the same time were starting to develop small city-states. And city-states are not necessarily like the cities we have today, but they were an independent group of different cities who had their own type of government, their own type of culture, and really the only thing that linked these city-states together was the fact that they spoke Greek. And they together thought of people who didn't speak Greek as barbarians. This may have been because of the fact that, to their ears, foreigners spoke gibberish, something to the extent of sounding like bar bar bar. But at the same time, they also thought that people who didn't speak Greek were unsophisticated, unenlightened, dirty. Now even though these people all spoke Greek, they were still fiercely competitive with one another and often got into battles and later on even large wars with each other. They would not consider themselves Greek, but they would more likely identify with the places where they were from. For example, if you were from Athens, you would identify as an Athenian. If you were from Sparta, you would most likely identify as a Spartan. In the 540s, Cyrus the Great, who was the emperor of Persia, took over a Greek colony in Ionia, where modern-day Turkey is, and the Greeks there were encouraged to rebel by the Greeks in Athens. In the 490s BCE, Darius, who was the son of Cyrus the Great, decides to invade Athens as a punishment for the rebellion that they caused in Ionia. However, they lost at the Battle of Marathon. Xerxes, the son of Darius, decides that he wants to take revenge on the Greeks after their loss at Marathon and takes a force of 250,000 Persian soldiers to Greece, 10,000 of which are immortals, which are basically a special unit of military cavalry that is specially trained to fight to their death. At this point, this is kind of the, the first thing that unites the Greeks, and Sparta, a city-state in Greece, decides that they want to help Athens. And this is what the movie 300 is based on. So Sparta, under the leadership of King Leonidas, takes 300 of their soldiers to a place called Thermopylae, which is a strategic area that the Persians would have to pass through to get to the rest of Greece. And they hold off the enormous Persian forces for a couple of days, however eventually die. But this is what inspired the rest of the Greeks to unite. A Greek politician named Themistocles was able to convince the people of Athens to evacuate to an island as bait for Xerxes' navy, who would have to travel through a tight channel where the rest of the Greeks would be waiting to attack. And it was there that the Persian fleets were destroyed, and Xerxes, angered by this as he was watching atop a mountain, decides to invade once again two years later with a land force. However, this land force was also destroyed by the Greeks. And this was really the turning point in the Persian Empire as it starts to decline. The Greeks, who finally united due to this war with the Persians, would also descend into a civil war soon after the battles with Persia ended. What I like about this story is the themes that it shed lights on. The theme of prejudice of the Greeks thinking they're better than the Persians because of the fact that they speak Greek and they consider the Persians uneducated, unsophisticated. The theme that smaller enemies will unite against a bigger enemy given enough reason to. And the fact that the Greeks use trickery to defeat a bigger foe. I love how history can kind of show us our tendencies as they play out on the battlefield or wherever it is in history that these events take place. 
Thank you for listening. Please click the like button if you enjoyed this video, and please click the button to subscribe.